We are live from the Gainsbridge Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, Indiana. This is Monday Night Raw. And hot off the heels of the season premiere last week, even rewinding to two weeks ago, the story remains the same. The Judgment Day continues to wreak havoc across anybody who's anyone on Monday Night Raw. We saw what they did to Roman Reigns last week. We see the chaos that ensued with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn two weeks ago. Will all roads lead to tonight here in Indianapolis? A massive six-man tag team matchup as Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, along a partner with their choosing, go against the champions of Raw, the Judgment Day, and a massive six-man tag team matchup. That is coming up later tonight, but we are starting off Raw in a big big way the following contest is scheduled for one fall making his way to the ring from black forest south australia weighing in at 330 pounds bronson reed well big bronson reed has recently had a run in with a Judgment Day member. We rewind the clock to seven nights ago in Chicago at the season premiere of Raw. Dominic Mysterio retaining his Intercontinental Championship over a weakened Solo Sokoa. Dirty Dom trying to add insult to injury and attack after the matchup. Luckily for Solo, Big Brunson Reed coming to his aid. Reed might have been feeling a little bit of guilt after unintentionally injuring Solo Sokoa one week prior. Reed laying out Dominic with a tsunami inside the All-State Arena and coming to the aid of Solo last week on Raw. But now Brunson Reed runs in to an old opposer. The king of strong style, Shinsuke Nakamura, a man he ran over in the gauntlet, gauntlet match two weeks back. Nakamura looking for a little payback here in Indianapolis. As Nakamura approaches a squared circle, we take you back to two weeks ago. It was a gauntlet matchup main event to determine Dirty Dom's opponent for the season premiere. Nakamura walking down the aisle and running in to Big Brunson Reed. Reed was not looking to let anybody gain any ounce of confidence against him. Reed running over Nakamura, barely allowing Nakamura to get any offense in that gauntlet matchup. Reed obviously turning away the challenge of Shinsuke on that night. Went on to get knocked out of the gauntlet by the enforcer Solo Sokoa moments later. Well, Solo Sokoa obviously walked in to the Intercontinental Championship matchup last week with damaged ribs, unintentionally injured, as Solo Sokoa said during a powerbomb by Bronson Reed in the gauntlet matchup. Solo went on to survive, defeat Brunson Reed, but then those injuries only got worse when he went one-on-one -on -one with the monster of all monsters, Braun Strowman, in the closing moments of that gauntlet match. Unfortunately, Solo Sokoa was fighting an uphill battle last week and unable to take the Intercontinental Championship away from Dirty Dom. But all roads keep on moving. And now Brunson Reed, who is probably in the crosshairs of Dirty Dominic Mysterio and the Judgment Day at this point, needs to focus on the King of Strong Style, Shinsuke Nakamura. We are underway with Monday Night Raw in ring action tonight, live from the Gainbridge Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, Indiana. Also a huge six-man tag team main event coming up as we mentioned, the Judgment Day. The World Tag Team Champions Damian Priest and Finn Balor who laid waste to Roman Reigns last week in Chicago alongside the Intercontinental Champion and Dirty Dom will take on Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn and a partner of their choosing. Huge six-man tag team bout coming up later tonight here on Raw. We also look ahead as the Harbinger of Doom, Karrion Cross, will contest against one half of the Viking Raiders in Ivar less than two weeks before his casket match against Braun Breaker. Plus, the Queen, Charlotte Flair, returns to in-ring action here on the Red Brand, one-on-one -on -one with Sonya Deville, all coming up tonight here on Raw. All the while, Big Brunson Reed looking to have lightning strike twice, looking to run over Shinsuke Nakamura once again. 
Bronson Reed, as we mentioned, might have been feeling a little bit of guilt for unintentionally hurting the ribcage of Solo Sokoa two weeks ago. Maybe one of the reasons he came to Solo's aid last week, but Reed also might have got himself in the line of fire of the Judgment Day. Somewhere where he may not want to be, or on the contrary, may be exactly where the big Aussie wants to be. Bronson Reed, who's been making waves, or shall I say, sending tsunamis across Monday Night Raw ever since his return back in March, may be looking for an opportunity opportunity at the Intercontinental Championship. Certainly was impressive in the gauntlet match two weeks ago and looking to be just as impressive once again here tonight on Raw. Shinsuke Nakamura holding his own in there. The veteran, the world traveled champion in Shinsuke, not looking to be embarrassed by the big Aussie once again here on the red brand. Talking about championship opportunities, I'm sure Nakamura would love to get in the line of fire of one. Nice takedown by Shinsuke that time, trying to throw Brunson Reed off his game and maybe trying to take the power out of the big Aussie with this cross arm breaker. And see Brunson Reed absolutely breaking that submission hold with emphatic force, almost like it didn't break a sweat. Damn near a brain buster. And now Reed once again starting to rev up the engines. Nakamura wanted this matchup with Reed. He may regret that decision as Brunson Reed sees an opportunity to get a massive W here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Nakamura getting ragged all to the other side of the ring. Brunson Reed now squashing Nakamura on the canvas. The big Aussie has gone toe to toe with some of Raw's best ever since his return to the red brand in the month of March. We have seen him in the squared circle with the likes of CM Punk, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, among others here on Monday Night Raw. Bronson Reed always impressing inside of that ring, but Shinsuke Nakamura not looking to be a stepping stone for that man. Nakamura now, my goodness! The agility of the big Aussie, damn near coming back to haunt him as Nakamura set him for an explosive ride. Nakamura, a feat of strength that we didn't think was possible, but Brunson Reed still in this matchup. Going for a knee, and Brunson Reed sidesteps it. And the big Aussie, once again, shoulder blocking down Nakamura. Sometimes it's nothing fancy, but it's certainly effective as Reed using his own body as a weapon to manhandle Nakamura right back down to the canvas. And I'm still in shock by that feat of strength we saw from Shinsuke a few moments ago. Nakamura going back to the well with what has worked for him so far. The cross arm breaker on Brunson Reed. Reed once again just denying Nakamura the satisfaction of keeping that submission hold locked in for a period of time. And ragdolled over the top rope. Nakamura right now has got no answer for the size and strength of the big Aussie, Big Brunson Reed. Nakamura looking up at the lights at the Gainsbridge Fieldhouse. All the while, Reed looking to repeat history from the gauntlet matchup two weeks ago. Gotta wonder what's going through the mind of the Intercontinental Champion, Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Thought he was going to rub salt in the wounds of Solo Sokoa last week. He did for a moment until Brunson Reed arrived on the scene and dropped him with a tsunami in the middle of Chicago, Illinois. Brunson Reed certainly making some noise last week on Raw. Looking to do so again as he press slams Nakamura. Nakamura's looking worse for wear. Brunson Reed full in control here on Raw. Nakamura crawling away, but there may be no mercy to give. Bronson Reed going to the top, and I think we know what comes next. Tsunami! Shinsuke Nakamura hanging in there, but the big Aussie is on a rampage on Raw. Bronson Reed will not be denied, continuing to send title waves. Well, Shinsuke Nakamura wanted this matchup, but as we met... Oh, wait a minute, hold on. The Intercontinental Champion, Dirty Dominic Mysterio, with a steel chair to the back of the big Aussie. 
Well, Dominic Mysterio not going to allow himself to be a laughing stock after getting dropped by that tsunami by Brunson Reed last week in Chicago. Reed trying to celebrate his win over Nakamura. Dirty Dom not going to allow it. Used a steel chair to chop the big man down to size and now just instituting a beatdown. Well, he never once discounted the talent of the Intercontinental Champion, but certainly lives up to his dirty nickname. Maybe regretting that attack, because Big Brunson Reed's adrenaline is flowing, and he is looking to drop Dominic Mysterio once again. Be careful what you wish for, Dom, as he gets squashed right in the corner. Going back up. Tsunami! Dirty Dom thought he was going to get the edge. But Brunson Reed, for the second week in a row, has splatted Dominic Mysterio on the canvas like a pancake. You're going to need a shovel to get that man off the ground. The big Aussie, Brunson Reed. What did we say before? Will not be denied. Looking to continue to send those tsunamis throughout the Monday Night Raw locker room. Nakamura. Reed had his back turned, and Nakamura struck with a knee. Oh, no, not again. Not on the ramp. King Shasa right to the face. Brunson Reed out cold after being stuck between a rock and a hard place. Nakamura gets the last laugh. Can't get enough universe mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more universe than ever before. Become a No Nation Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of universe mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how universe mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more universe than ever before. It's a better time than any to become a No Nation Gaming channel member. Join today and gain access to Halloween Havoc Night 1 and Night 2. And get this, Night 1's coming up live this Saturday from Baltimore, Maryland. And signed, sealed, and set to be delivered at Halloween Havoc Night 1. Monday Night Raw's hottest newcomer, Lyra Valkyria, will be in action. Representing the Creed, she will fight Ivy Nile, which should be a great women's division contest. Coming up from SmackDown, one half of the new WWE Tag Team Champions and LWO's newest member, Dragon Lee, going one-on-one -on -one with a man who knows the LWO very well, El Idolo Andrade. That's this Saturday in Baltimore. And also from SmackDown, the Cruiserweight Championship will be defended in a triple threat matchup. These three men have been intertwined for months on the blue brand. Tyler Bate runs into JD McDonough, as well as Pete Dunne. It's a triple threat matchup for the Cruiserweight Championship of the world. And hot off the heels of his return to Thursday Night SmackDown, John Cena will be in the house, teaming up alongside the World Heavyweight Champion Cody Rhodes as they go up against Randy Orton's recent running buddies in Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. It's Halloween Havoc, night one, live this Saturday from Baltimore. Become a channel member at the join button or the link up in the cards, and don't miss this exciting action. You're of course also gonna gain access to the Bad Blood kickoff show. We're less than two weeks away from our trip to Boston, Saturday night, October the 19th. Just some more channel member exclusive action. We are back inside the Gainsbridge Field House here in Indianapolis, Indiana. And it is time for women's tag team action live on Monday Night Raw. Bailey alongside Becky Lynch and alongside the Queen Charlotte Flair finally putting their issues with Chelsea Piper and Sonya to rest several weeks ago. Now they look to move forward.
Ever since the man, Becky Lynch, returned to Monday Night Raw in the month of July, herself along with Bailey were intertwined in a rivalry against Chelsea Green, Piper Niven, and Sonya Deville. They called upon the Queen, Charlotte Flair, and in a six-woman tag team matchup, they took down their rivals several weeks ago at Queen of the Ring. Well, now Becky Lynch and Bailey realizing that they may have something here in this partnership. Two of the four horsewomen stand alongside each other once again. Set for battle against Katana Chance and Caden Carter. And with the Women's Tag Team Championships over on SmackDown, currently housed by Asuka and Io Sky. Could one of these two teams be looking to make some noise, move up the ladder, and possibly be one step closer to number one contendership? All remains to be seen as we are set for tag team action live here on Monday Night Raw. Caden Carter kicking things off with Bailey, and Chance and Carter know a thing or two about those tag team titles. Former champions in their own right and actually contested for the gold. And the championships were housed by Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark back in the month of August. Baszler and Stark falling short to Asuka and Io Sky in their Queen of the Ring rematch this past Thursday at the season premiere of SmackDown. You gotta believe the number one contender spot now wide open for teams across Raw and SmackDown. I'm sure Asuka and Io Sky await their next challengers. It could very well be one of these two duos. Caden Carter and Tatana Chance hoping to get back to the promised land. And certainly a victory over Bailey and Becky Lynch too. Highly praised veterans here on Monday Night Raw. Certainly make a lot of noise. It could absolutely put Chance and Carter at the top of the line. Double super kick there to Bailey, but Katana Chance better keep her eye on the ball. Cannot allow a rally from Bailey here in Indianapolis. Well, so much action on the horizon. Again, hit the join button down below. Become a No Nation Gaming Channel member. Gain your access to Halloween Havoc Night 1 and Night 2, the Bad Blood kickoff show in just a couple of weeks as well. What about the action that goes down each and every Wednesday over on the Nomination Gaming TikTok? It is Velocity, and this coming Wednesday, Andrade, a busy week ahead for him, will be contesting against the other half of the WWE Tag Team Champions from SmackDown, Rey Mysterio. Andrade's issues with the LWO run deep. They continue this Wednesday and this Saturday. As for Velocity, scan the QR code on your screen right now. Go ahead and follow on TikTok, on the No Nation Gaming TikTok. Don't miss a second of the action each and every Wednesday on Velocity. The man Becky Lynch tagged in, trying to keep the momentum for herself and Bailey strong. Tana Chance able to land on her feet momentarily, but there's Chance going behind. Takes down the veteran in the man Becky Lynch. And another head scissors takedown. Chance and Carter are real close to becoming women's tag team champions once again back in the month of August. They could smell the gold. A victory over these two veterans tonight could absolutely put them back in line. And that is what they are hoping to do as they double team Becky Lynch in the corner. And the man gets taken down once more. Talking about women's action here on Monday Night Raw, the women's division certainly has been heating up as of late. The additions of Lyra Valkyria, the Queen Charlotte Flair making a return a couple of weeks ago and will be in action later tonight. What about the arrival of the hottest free agent in professional wrestling today, Jade Cargill, signed, sealed, and set to be delivered here to Monday Night Raw, will be here in New Orleans, Louisiana, live on Raw two weeks from tonight. All the while the division continues to heat up, these two teams looking to make their path as Katana Chance, or I should say Caden Carter, knocks down Becky Lynch momentarily. Might have scored an upset that time if it weren't for Bailey. Wait a minute, inside cradle. The man, a lot of tricks up her sleeve. Almost had this matchup won. Caden Carter building momentum. Becky Lynch not looking to allow it. Hit that tope suicide to the outside a few minutes ago. Damn near took Becky Lynch out of this contest. Nonetheless, there's a tag made to Bailey. Becky Lynch may be feeling the effects of that tope suicide and some great offense by Caden Carter. Now these two party animals looking for a double team maneuver. Could be looking to put this matchup away. Katana Chance on the shoulders of Caden Carter. Double team dead center of the ring. If I'm Bailey, I got no air left in my lungs. Well, unfortunately, again, the man Becky Lynch 
breaking things up and allowing this match to continue. But Katana Chance tried to keep her foot on the gas pedal, got caught. Becky and Bailey having some trouble with a team who does have more experience as a duo. A Katana Chance and Kaden Carter. Crucifix bomb by Becky Lynch. Well, now Becky sending her inside out, going for a cross arm breaker here. Not necessarily the disarmer, but certainly similar. A ton of chance not looking to allow that disaster to be bestowed upon her. What has she got in mind here? Could be looking for a Frankensteiner takedown into the pinfall. Becky once again might have got caught. Becky to the reversal. Is it Katana Chance who's going to get caught? It is. Becky and Bailey sneak away with the victory. Well, we got to look out for these two women in terms of women's tag team championship contendership. But speaking of tag team action here on Raw, let us rewind the clock to last week. The season premiere live from Chicago as Chelsea Green and Piper Niven were paired up against the EST Bianca Belair and the WWE Women's Champion Cora Jade. No shortage of history between those two women, and Bianca made it very clear after the matchup that they were friends for tonight, but Bianca still wants her one-on-one -on -one opportunity against Cora. Of course, the history goes all the way back to SummerSlam where Bianca Belair won the Women's Championship only for Cora Jade to cash in Money in the Bank just moments later. A crowning night in the career for the Cora, for the generation of Jade, Cora Jade cashing in her briefcase and walking away from Ford Field with the gold. And once again, Bianca Belair thought she had the championship in her grasp back in Madison Square Garden, only for Cora Jade to sneak in at the last second and steal the pinfall away from the EST. Well, as announced earlier this afternoon, Bianca will get her one-on-one -on -one opportunity against Cora. It is coming up Saturday night, October the 19th at Bad Blood. Bianca has defeated Cora in non-title singles action before. Can she do it again when the gold's on the line in less than two weeks in Boston at Bad Blood? After no mercy is shown and a queen is crowned, the bad blood will boil over. Coming your way live on Saturday night, October 19th from the TD Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. Witness the unforgiving, high octane, and high stakes action as Raw, SmackDown, and No Nation Gaming channel membership proudly present WWE Bad Blood. And the road to Bad Blood rolls through Indianapolis tonight as this man, the Harbinger of Doom, Karrion Cross prepares for the matchup he wanted against Mr. Money in the Bank, Braun Breaker. Less than two weeks from tonight, it is a casket match in Boston. Cross and Breaker have been at each other's throats throughout the summer and into the fall, looking for the destruction of one another. For Karrion Cross, it started out very simple. Braun Breaker got in his business, Cross was gonna make him pay. But things have continued to develop, continued to get more personal. Breaker has been left laying, has been left bloodied by hands of Karrion Cross time and time again. Cross wants the destruction of Braun Breaker, is looking to use Mr. Money in the Bank as a stepping stone in his legacy here on the red brand. Braun Breaker at this point simply looks for the destruction of Karrion Cross in hopes of retribution for all that he has done. Well, only one man's gonna get their wish. Only one man will prove they are better than the other. Only one man will stand atop the casket, closing the lid on the other in less than two weeks, Saturday night, October the 19th in the TD Garden at Bad Blood. But as for tonight, here in the Gainsbridge Fieldhouse, the Harbinger of Doom carrying cross must remain focused on one half of the Viking Raiders, the behemoth known as Ivar. And I am sure Braun Breaker, wherever he is, is looking on. 
It was only two weeks ago that he was forced into a two-on-one handicap matchup against Cross's running buddies, Akam and Razor, the authors of Pain. A matchup that was originally supposed to be a tag team bout with Baron Corbin's involvement. Unfortunately, Corbin not making it to the arena that night. Braun Breaker and many of us speculated that the final testament had something to do with that. Breaker fought the AOP nonetheless. And although it was a great effort, the numbers game just outmatching the badass on that night. Only to make matters worse for Karrion Cross to arrive on the scene, beat down Braun Breaker with a steel chair, and put him right through the announce table. That was just two weeks ago here on Raw. Of course, it was last week that Karrion Cross threw out the challenge for the casket matchup. Braun Breaker did accept. But I don't know if Braun Breaker really realizes what he's getting himself into. No countouts, no disqualifications in a casket match. Any rules apply. The only thing that matters in the end result is putting your opponent in the casket and slamming the lid shut. Karrion Cross, along with the final testament, may have the advantage come bad blood. All remains to be seen what's going to happen live at the TD Garden in less than two weeks' time. Right now, Ivar just trying to give Carrie and Cross some work here at Indianapolis, Indiana. Ivar looking for a victory that's going to set his momentum on the right path as he's got the Harbinger of Doom looking up, looking up at the lights, at least, momentarily. I'm sure Braun Breaker, again, wherever he is, is loving to see Cross having to run into such a behemoth less than two weeks before their battle at Bad Blood. Ivar, somebody who has been lacking momentum for a long time here on Monday Night Raw, may have the size and the strength, but does he have the wherewithal and the confidence to get through carrying cross? Tell you what, one thing about the Harbinger of Doom is win, lose, or draw. That man continues to be a mastermind and play his own games. We've seen it throughout 2024 here on the Red Brand, whether he was opposing the Celtic warrior Sheamus, whether he had issues with Sami Zayn during his Intercontinental Championship run, Baron Corbin, of course, those issues still lingering. And the obvious issues with Braun Breaker, no matter the opposer, Karrion Cross wants one thing for the man who stands across the ring from him, and that is absolute destruction. Make them fall in prey against Karrion Cross. Wants the same for Ivar that he wants for Braun Breaker. Unfortunately for the Harbinger of Doom, Ivar may not give him that satisfaction as Cross is getting a fight here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Ivar trying to muscle up. Wait a minute. Carry and Cross the one. Muscle it up, Ivar. Off the reversal. Almost similar to Brunson Reed earlier tonight. The big man's agility coming back to haunt him. But he might have just caught Cross that time, not just yet. Going for a boot. I don't know if he got all of it. Cross able to shake it off. And a doomsday Saeed and Ivar. And that might do it. Ivar may be spent, not just yet. Harry and Cross able to dust himself off after that boot missed. Doomsday Saido, Ivar may be sent for a loop, but still has enough left in the tank to keep on driving. Going to the outside, or at least looked like he was going to momentarily. Ivar's got to find a window here, trying to get some R&R &R and find a new opportunity to take down the Harbinger of Doom himself. Cross unloading here on Monday Night Raw. Looking to send a message to Mr. Money in the Bank, Braun Breaker. That is all this is about tonight for Karrion Cross. Pick up a victory, send a message, make sure momentum's on your side before the casket matchup. Somebody is going to be put in the casket with the lid closed on him, sent six feet under. I would not want to be one of those two gentlemen. Come October the 19th in Boston. Ivar fighting for his life in there right there, right now. Trying to use his own body as a weapon against Karrion Cross. Sends him to the outside. Ivar starting to get his feet underneath him here. Cross now the one looking up at the lights of the Gainsbridge Fieldhouse. This is smart by Ivar. Not hustling up, not rushing. 
Took a few moments to get some R&R, and now he's going to try to take advantage of an obviously weakened carry across. May have taken too long. Ivar set right to those diamond-plated steps. Now it's Cross the one who's going to create some distance and take a moment for R&R &R in this matchup. Allowing Ivar to come to him, and that may not work out. Ivar sent into the corner and collapsed once more by Carrion. And now the physical beatdown commences. This is all about hoping Braun Breaker has got his eyes locked on this contest. Ivar looking worse for wear. Carry across, try to do his damnest to lock in that straight jacket submission hold of the big man. I don't know if he's got it fully grasped. You see the legs not long enough to wrap around the behemoth that known as Ivar. Cross doing his best to try to choke the life, but I don't know if he's got the submission hold in. Ivar able to create some distance. Well, his size and certainly his strength coming back to play him some dividends. Wait a minute here. Another reversal inside cradle by the Harbinger of Doom. Carry and Cross finds a way for victory. Well, by hook or by crook, the Harbinger of Doom survives this run-in with a Viking here tonight on Raw. All roads lead to October 19th. Here is your winner, Carrion A man who goes to sleep at night hoping and praying for the destruction of his colleagues. And hold on now. Well, the match is over, but Carrion Cross not done sending a message to Braun Breaker. Going after Ivar at ringside here and bouncing his head off the floor of the Gainsbridge Fieldhouse. Well, this is ridiculous. Ivar falling in this matchup to Cross. A loss is a loss. It is what it is. But Cross now rubbing salt in the wounds. All about sending a message. All about making sure that Braun Breaker knows what's coming. One week from Saturday in Boston at Bad Blood. Oh, hold on a second. Ivar may be down at ringside, but Cross has got the full undivided attention of Broad Breaker, who's making a beeline for the squared circle. Well, these two men will meet in the casket matchup a week from Saturday. Breaker not looking to wait. He was put through the announce table two weeks ago. A few weeks before that was bloodied in the backstage area. Braun Breaker wants his pound of flesh against Karrion Cross. We may have caught and carry across at the wrong time, just as we saw with Brunson Reed earlier tonight. Sometimes when the adrenaline's already flowing, it ain't gonna go well for the man trying to make the attack. But Braun Breaker may be too motivated for Karrion Cross to handle right now. The Harbinger of Doom sent to the outside here in Indianapolis. Oh man, one half of those wolf dogs clearing off the announce table. Braun Breaker making the trip to Indianapolis, Indiana to give Karrion Cross a preview of what may be coming Saturday night, October the 19th. Cross in trouble. Spine buster through the announce table. These two men will continue to destroy each other until one of them is put in the casket with the lid shut. It is Braun Breaker carrying Cross one week from Saturday at Bad Blood. Prepare for the most exciting 10 minutes, a fast-paced 600 seconds, and all the action you can handle. Coming your way, exclusively, each and every Wednesday, only on the Noah Nation Gaming TikTok. The superstars of Raw and SmackDown race to the finish line on Velocity. Competition at an all-time high that you won't see anywhere else. Scan the QR code. Follow on TikTok and don't miss a second of Velocity.
Last week in Chicago at the season premiere of Monday Night Raw, hometown superstar CM Punk battled the megastar LA Knight in a number one contenders matchup for AJ Styles' WWE Championship, trying to find their way to bad blood a week from Saturday. An incredible bout between two men who are starting to know each other very well after several battles over the last few months. But in the end, it was CM Punk securing number one contendership. A short-lived celebration, however, when the Phenomenal One arrived on the scene and once again dropped CM Punk in the middle of the squared circle. But nonetheless, CM Punk was the victor, and he gets his matchup one-on-one -on -one with AJ Styles for the WWE Championship a week from Saturday. Styles took advantage of the triple threat rules at no mercy, but it is one-on-one -on -one at bad blood. Punk, Styles, a wrestling fan's dream matchup for the most prestigious prize in the industry one week from Saturday in Boston, Mass. But there is still action to be had here on Monday Night Raw, including the in-ring Raw return of the Queen, Charlotte Flair. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making her way to the ring from the Queen. Well, Charlotte Flair has always been known as the queen here in WWE, at least up until her absence over the last few years. And somebody who may be taking issue with Charlotte still dubbing herself the queen would be the 2024 Queen of the Ring winner, Tiffany Stratton. Well, Tiffany Stratton with a victory over Liv Morgan last week and a very interesting confrontation as Charlotte Flair was out on the aisle way Gave a little look to Tiffany Stratton as if there's only room for one queen here on Monday Night Raw. Interesting development last week in Chicago. Remains to be seen if Tiffany Stratton will respond to that showdown that we saw in the All-State Arena. But nonetheless, the veteran of the squared circle, one of the four horsewomen, somebody who has won championships all across the WWE, whether it be here on Raw, over on SmackDown, and the NXT brand, Charlotte Flair returning to this industry just a few weeks ago at the Queen of the Ring event. A simple story of someone who had accomplished it all, done everything there was to do, but when an opportunity arose, Charlotte Flair chose to kick down the door. And now the Queen is back and looking to get back in the swing of things here on Monday Night Raw. And I am sure Sonya Deville is looking to get back at Charlotte for a few weeks to go. Well, don't forget, each and every Sunday, the 2024 Cruiserweight Classic is live at 12 noon Eastern time from the Hammerstein Ballroom in Midtown Manhattan. This Sunday, TNA legend Frankie Kazarian goes one-on-one -on -one with the LWO's Joaquin Wilde in the first round, plus Alpha Academy's leader, Chad Gable, meets another TNA superstar in Jonathan Gresham. The Cruiserweight Classic, each and every Sunday, it continues this Sunday at 12 noon Eastern. Sonya Deville on the losing side of that six-woman tag team matchup back in Madison Square Garden last month. Charlotte Flair, of course, one of the women, getting her hand raised. Sonya looking to get back at the Queen Charlotte Flair here tonight on Raw. This is Charlotte's first matchup on the red brand in a couple of years now. And as we mentioned, similar situation to Roman Reigns, somebody who, of course, stepped away from this industry for several years as well and returned earlier this year. Back at WrestleMania, confronting the World Heavyweight Champion at the time, Gunther. Charlotte Flair had simply done all there was to do. Won every championship, fought everybody known as the best here in the WWE. But as a few years pass, and really the tides change here on Raw, new opportunities arise, not only for the women who have consistently competed, but for veterans like Charlotte Flair. New championships to win, new opponents to face. I'm sure that had a lot to do with Charlotte accepting that open invitation from Bailey and Becky Lynch several weeks ago. Stand alongside them in the six-woman tag and queen of the ring. Sonya Deville not happy about that decision. 
We talked about it earlier tonight. The Raw Women's Division just continues to heat up as Charlotte Flair sends Sonya Deville inside out. Charlotte Flair back in action. Of course, that interesting confrontation with the Queen of the Ring winner, Tiffany Stratton, who of course waits the WWE Women's Championship opportunity next month at Survivor Series. Jade Cargill, one of the hottest free agents in the industry today, on her way to Raw two weeks from tonight, live from New Orleans, Louisiana. Lyra Valkyria, one of the newest signings to the red brand, former NXT Women's Champion, has been making waves. What about the Women's Championship match that is signed for Bad Blood a week from Saturday? Cora Jade will defend her gold against the EST Bianca Belair. No shortage of history between those two women. Bianca finally going to get Cora in a one-on-one -on -one matchup with the gold in the line. Right now it is Charlotte Flair and Sonya Deville. The spotlight on them. Both of these women looking to move up the rankings here on the red brand. And after Charlotte Flair confronted Tiffany Stratton last week, certainly has to come out here and prove her worth all over again on Monday Night Raw. Charlotte Flair may take a little issue with Tiffany Stratton. Maybe room for only one queen here on Monday Night Raw. Nobody can deny the buff Barbie. Not only the talent, but certainly the results she has produced. Battling for, should say through, four rounds of the Queen of the Ring tournament. Outlasting SmackDowns Raquel Rodriguez in the finals last month in Madison Square Garden to win the whole thing and again earn her opportunity to challenge for the WWE Women's title in November at Survivor Series. Meanwhile, Charlotte Flair trying to close the gap between herself and Sonya Deville, but she got caught that time. Sonya lying in wait and got the queen coming to her. Well, they say you step to the queen, you best not miss, and Sonya Deville certainly did not miss that time. Sending Charlotte back inside the ring, and Flair is looking worse for wear. Sidestep that time, Sonya Deville has got to try to take advantage off that misstep by Charlotte. Caught her on the apron. And now here's Deville tackling her down. Submission hold locked in, bit of a triangle choke. I don't know if she's got enough here. Charlotte Flair knows her way around a submission or two. Able to create some separation before disaster could be had. Sending Sonya to the ropes, going for a spear it looked like. Sonya putting on the brakes. Deville doing her homework on the way to Indianapolis tonight. Well, Charlotte Flair is the first singles competition she has seen in several years in this industry and may be feeling a little bit worse for wear, realizing that tonight is very different than Queen of the Ring. Nowhere to tag out to Bailey or Becky Lynch. It's all her tonight. Well, hold on here. The Queen going to the top, going for a moonsault. Wait a minute. Double press. Down goes Sonya Deville. Impressive as all hell by Charlotte Flair. Unfortunately for her, this matchup isn't over yet. Sonya and Charlotte continuing to battle as Flair could be looking for a figure four leg lock. Or maybe a little figure eight on Sonya Deville. Dead center of the ring. Flair with the submission locked in tight and that's gonna be a victory. Oh, well, hold on. Will Tiffany Stratton, the Queen of the Ring winner, return in the favor? An interesting development between these two queens here on Raw. Well, we want to take you back to earlier tonight here in Indianapolis. Bronson Reed victorious over Shinsuke Nakamura. And again, a celebration that was short-lived thanks to the arrival of the Intercontinental Champion, Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Look at to get back at the big Aussie for dropping him with that tsunami last week in Chicago at the season premiere. Well, Dominic Mysterio thought he got the edge over Brunson Reed, but that did not last long. Adrenaline was flowing, and Brunson Reed was fired up, as you're going to see momentarily. The Intercontinental Champion, Dirty Dominic Mysterio, did not earn that nickname for no reason. But Brunson Reed looking to remind Dom that he better watch where he sticks his nose, knocking him down to the canvas momentarily. And then for the second week in a row, Dominic going splat thanks to a tsunami by Big Brunson Reed.
A situation continues to develop between those two superstars. Dominic Mysterio, he better been icing those ribs for the last half hour or so, because he's in action coming up next alongside his Judgment Day brethren. It's a six-man tag against Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and a partner of their choosing. It's coming up live next here on Raw. Can't get enough Universe Mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more Universe than ever before. Become a No Nation Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of Universe Mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how Universe Mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more universe than ever before. We're back live here in Indianapolis, Indiana. It is main event time as the Judgment Day has unfortunately arrived on the scene. The World Tag Team Champions, Damian Priest and Finn Balor. The Intercontinental Champion, Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Continuing to make new enemies week in and week out. But tonight they run in to some old enemies in Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and a partner of their choosing. All we can say is be careful what you wish for, Judgment Day. The history between Sami Zayn and the Judgment Day runs deep. Dirty Dominic Mysterio stealing the Intercontinental title away from Sami back in the month of July in London, England. Priest and Balor with a ton to do with that. Sami has gone one-on-one -on -one with both of those individuals as well. Sami Zayn has pinned Finn Balor not once but twice in singles action, most recently two weeks ago here on Monday Night Raw. Well, Damian Priest attacking Sami Zayn after the matchup. Kevin Owens then arriving on the scene. A brawl ensuing in the arena. KO and Sami with a score to settle against Priest Balor and the Judgment Day as a whole. And for the first time since SummerSlam in August, the prize fighter is in action. Live and in living color here on Raw. Kevin Owens during his WWE Championship reign was entangled with the Judgment Day and even defended the gold against Finn Balor at one point in time. Really unfinished business between all of these gentlemen if you ask me. 2024 has been a banner year for that man, the prize fighter. And just because there's been a couple of hiccups in the road throughout the summer, now Owens back in the line of fire in the fall and look at a start right back down on the right path alongside his best friend Sami Zayn. But who have these two men chosen to be their tag team partner? Oh man, well things get even more interesting here in Indianapolis. Well, Kevin Owens and this man, CM Punk, with a storied history as well. The last time they shared a ring, SummerSlam in August. A matchup that ended in a handshake. Respect between the two individuals. And it looks as if that respect and if a lot of unfinished business is all coming back around here tonight as the Second City Saint arrives on the scene. One week from Saturday, CM Punk 
will contest against the phenomenal AJ Styles, looking to get back the WWE Championship that he was never pinned or submitted to lose last month at No Mercy. CM Punk gets Styles one week from Saturday in Boston. But tonight, a completely different story. Punk's got unfinished business with the Judgment Day, dating back to the month of May and June here on Monday Night Raw. His pursuit of the WWE Championship really blinded Punk and allowed Punk to brush off those issues for quite some time. But it seems as if the respect that was built through two wars throughout the summer between CM Punk and Kevin Owens not only comes back to benefit KO and Sammy, but gives CM Punk a reason to get back in the ring with the Judgment Day and look to settle his own scores as well. Well, things certainly getting interesting in this massive all-star, if you will, six-man tag team main event live here on Raw. It's been an action-packed night for the Gainsbridge Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, Indiana, less than two weeks before our trip to Boston for bad blood. We are also hot off the heels of what was a heart-wrenching night for the rest of the Raw locker room as they watched the Judgment Day be successful and not one but two, uh, two equations, excuse me, last Monday night here on Raw. Damian Priest and Finn Balor leaving Roman Reigns laying in the back half of the season premiere last week. But now they run into two old enemies in Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, who they were throwing fisticuffs with just two weeks ago. And Kevin Owens is taking down Dirty Dom. Kevin Owens' first in ring action since his last matchup with CM Punk at SummerSlam in August over the WWE Championship. Owens took about a month away to rest and recoup. We saw him in the corner of Sami Zayn back in Montreal. Obviously that helped, getting him back in the line of fire of the Judgment Day, whether he intended it or not. And now all roads cross here in Indianapolis in this six-man tag team bout. Dirty Dominic Mysterio, you hate to give him credit, but taking down Kevin Owens that time. Dirty Dom, I'm sure, spent the last half hour or so in the backstage area with ice on his abdominal after taking a tsunami from Brunson Reed for the second week in a row. You can't say he didn't ask for it. Now the Archer of Infamy, Damian Priest, coming in hot off the heels over a pinfall victory against the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns last week. Certainly the, Finn, the Prince Finn Balor with a lot to do with that, aiding Damian Priest in victory. And saving Priest ass time and time again throughout that contest. The Judgment Day never been afraid to get their hands dirty, never been afraid to use the numbers to their advantage. And that is exactly what they did to Roman Reigns and quite frankly all of the bloodline over the last month on Raw. Priest and Balor eradicating Jay and Jimmy Uso from the red brand when they defeated them in the tables, ladders, and chairs matchup back in No Mercy. Priest not only defeating Solo Sokoa a couple of weeks ago here on Raw, but Solo Sokoa unintentionally hurt by Brunson Reed, and I'm sure the damage was only worsened by Dominic Mysterio last week. Who knows when Solo Sokoa is going to be 100% and back in action again. And then we saw what happened to Roman Reigns. Judgment Day certainly getting exactly what they wanted, and that is vanquishing the bloodline from the red brand. The Judgment Day, what a hold Dominion on Raw. They got to get rid of their enemies. Unfortunately for them, they continue to make new ones. Finn Balor coming off the top, going after Kevin Owens that time. Sami Zayn saved the day. Balor not going to hesitate to put his hands on a man who has pinned his shoulders to the canvas not once but twice in Sami Zayn. It's only two weeks ago, as we mentioned, it was Finn Balor who actually issued the challenge to Sami Zayn, only to be upset once more. Damian Priest laying out Sami Zayn two weeks ago with that ambush from behind himself and Kevin Owens rolling throughout the arena on that night. The Judgment Day, as we mentioned, a lot of enemies here on Monday Night Raw, whether they have stayed or whether they have gone. Priest, Balor, Dirty Dom, and even Rhea Ripley continue to hold their ground. You hate to give the devil their dues. Damian Priest now sent to enemy territory. Tag made to the number one contender, CM Punk. And look at Punk and Owens working in tandem. Something you never thought you'd see. 
Well, it's back in the month of June that CM Punk and Kevin Owens look to take out the Judgment Day in a tag team matchup on Raw. CM Punk willing to do anything he had to do to get a WWE Championship opportunity, saw it as an opportunity to get her to the skin of then-champion Kevin Owens. Left Owens high and dry against the Judgment Day on that night, but obviously, as we talked about before, respect built in battle between Punk and Kevin Owens throughout the summer, and now CM looks to get back into the ring with Judgment Day. Now the Judgment Day, you go back to the month of May and June, as we mentioned, they've left CM Punk laying a couple of times here on Monday Night Raw as well, and I'm sure the number one contender for the WWE Championship has not forgotten! CM Punk, Damian Priest going at it. That's a singles match I'd love to see any day of the week here in the WWE as Finn Balor comes hot out of the gate only to be dropped by the Second City Saint again. CM Punk has got his matchup with AJ Styles in less than two weeks at Bad Blood. Tonight he looks to do one good by Owens and Zayn and also his internal self and take out three men who have run rampant on the red brand. Punk on top, Balor trying to move out of the way, but Punk caught him with an elbow. Punk hot out of the gate here on Raw. Damian Priest breaking things up. Referee John Cohen's got to get the hell out of the way tonight. Finding himself in the line of fire between all these heavy hitters. Punk with a little cheap shot on Dirty Dom. Unfortunately, it only turned his back to one half of the World Tag Team Champions in Finn Balor. CM Punk stepping up to the plate tonight. But no matter the all-star unit that opposes the Judgment Day, they may have so much momentum, so much gold in their corner, that it may not matter. Fowler, Priest, and Dirty Don do things their way, and they may be on their way to doing so again in this Raw main event. Punk shot into the corner like a cannon off the drop kick. But CM Punk's still alive. Punk might have kicked out, but the damage may be done as Finn Balor once again knocks him down to size. Punk going to the corner, Balor going for a springboard, obviously nobody home, runs right into Sami Zayn, Sami Exploder! Sami knows a thing or two about pinning the Prince's shoulder to the canvas, Balor's not careful, it may happen for a three-peat here tonight. Tag made to the Intercontinental Champion. Zayn certainly not going to be opposed to getting his hands on a man who has stolen victory from him time and time again. Sami Zayn. Blue Thunderbomb on the Intercontinental Champion. Dominic Mysterio survives. The action hot and heavy all night long here in Indianapolis, but certainly the pace has been upped in your six-man tag team main event. Tensions are running high in the Monday Night Raw locker room. Blood is boiling less than two weeks from bad blood in Boston. CM Punk hoping to keep his momentum alive on the road to his contest with AJ Styles. The Judgment Day looking to continue to run rampant on the red brand. Who's going to get their wish? There's a tag made in the Second City Saint, the number one contender. Towards the WWE Championship. Down goes Balor. There goes Priest. CM Punk doing things his way here in Indiana. Dom on spaghetti legs. Oh, there's a reversal that time. Go for the crossbody. Nobody home. CM Punk now with Dom on his shoulders. Go to sleep. Into the cover. CM Punk and company turn away the Judgment Day, at least for the night. Tensions continue to rise on the road to bad blood. One week from Saturday, live in Boston. Don't miss Halloween Havoc this Saturday in Baltimore. What a night, live from Indianapolis. Good night from Monday Night Raw.